The lesson today will be setting in a long basic sleeve. But before we start, I would like to go over the sleeve sloper we're going to be using for the lesson. This is a basic sloper, meaning it has no seam allowance. It is a pattern that has been refined to be a sloper. This particular sleeve sloper is a fitted sleeve with two elbow darts. Let's go over the sections of the sloper. We have a cap. The cap represents the height of the underarm and the top that has to be covered. At the cap, we have notches. Two notches represent the back of the sleeve and one represents the front of the sleeve. To, re to get those notches, we must fold the cap to the end of the cap line, which is the bicep line. Folding it in half, we develop the points in which to place our notches. One for the front, two for the back. The second one is a half an inch below the first in the back. So we have the cap here. We have the bicep. And from there we go down to the elbow. This is the elbow line. And these are the two darts by the elbow. Continuing down, we have the wrist of the sleeve. Let's go over it again. We have the cap, the bicep, the elbow, and the wrist of the sleeve. The red line represents the lengthwise grain of the sleeve, or the way we have to place it on the fabric. The blue ones are the cross grain. Having developed a lengthwise grain and a crosswise grain, we can continue by developing a piece of muslin to copy the sleeve onto. Now you have a line here. This line represents half the wrist measurement. It's not on the lengthwise grain. If I were to fold the sleeve in half, I would then get the half wrist measurement, which goes, continues up to the elbow. That is the shape that the sleeve will fall. You have this blue line representing half the wrist, and the red line is our lengthwise grain. First, we must block a piece of muslin, large enough to accommodate the sleeve sloper. What do I mean by the term sloper? I had mentioned before, it's a pattern without seam allowance, and it has been refined to be a perfect pattern. Slopers are developed in basic bodices, skirts, and sleeves to use for designing with. Taking the sloper, my basic sleeve sloper, having my material blocked, I have placed a lengthwise grain, crosswise grain, to represent the length on the sleeve and the crosswise on the sleeve also. It's been blocked perfectly, and now I can place the sleeve sloper onto those lines, making sure that they line up perfectly. It is very important that your sleeve sloper lines up with the grain lines of the muslin. Once that's set up, you can use weights to hold it down. Make sure that it is exactly lined up or the sleeve will never fit properly. Another weight. I have some small ones to hold it into place. And if I didn't have weights, I could use pins on the cork top table. And those would hold my sleeve in position so that it does not move while I'm working. Once I have it down, I can then start copying the cap to the bicep line, down the sides, to the elbow, 
mark in my darts, come down to the wrist, to the half point of my wrist measurement, and draw it in. And here there is one that has been completely outlined. I check it to make sure that everything is blocked nicely. I have put in my notches. One notch represents the front to the back of the sleeve. I have my elbow darts for the shape. This happens to be a long fitted basic sloper. It could be a sleeve that's just squared off and not have the darts. In this case, I am using one with darts. The next step would be to put in the seam allowance because our sloper does not have any seam allowance. Would be a half an inch for the cap, one inch for the side seams, and a half an inch for the wrist. A half an inch because it's a shape, one inch because they're straight line, and a half an inch for the wrist. Here I have one that's already been added the seam allowance to it. And at this point, we're ready to cut it out. There is a half an inch, there is one inch, and a half an inch at the bottom. And of course, my lengthwise grain. Two notches the front, one notch the front, sorry, two notches the back. When we cut this out, the first thing to cut are the side seams, or the underarm seams of the sleeve. And I'll show you why. We cut this one out, and then we cut the other side. The last thing we cut is the cap. And it's important because you may want to use one of two methods that I'll be showing you. Once I have that cut out, the wrist can be cut. I have a shaped wrist here. This wrist can also be a straight. You may prefer to have a sloper that has a straight line at the bottom. I'm using a basic, classic, shaped one. But it can be straight. Now, paying close attention to the cutting out of the cap, because it's quite important that we either use this method of folding back the seam allowance before cutting through the cap, we fold it back, and then we cut out part of this cap on the half an inch seam allowance. And look what has developed, a hook. There is a hook that has developed. Had I cut it out before, folding it back, and I'll do this one, which is also used, both are correct. It's a preference. Let me cut the complete cap out. When I pin this seam together, what happens is, if I were to pin it this way, would be pinned together. You would see that the cap that had been cut with the hook is lined up with the seam. The other is short fabric. So if you were sewing this sleeve together, in this case, you would sew a nice line, you would be able to finish the two together. In this case, this would fly loose. But as I said, it is a preference. Now, let's pin this sleeve together. But before pinning, there's one more step needed. And that step is to sure the cap by machine or by hand. And I have some samples here. This one's cut, put it aside. Here is one that has been shirred by hand. 
Here is one that has been shared by machine. The sharing takes place from notch to notch, from the one in the front to the bottom one in the back. It can be done by machine, and it can be done with a very small running stitch by hand, right on the sewing line, and then a quarter of an inch above. So there are two sharing lines. And that will help to shape the cap when we set it into the armhole. One by machine, again, a preference. One by sewing it with a needle by hand. Once this is done, we are ready then to take the sleeve and pin it together and get it ready for setting in. The first thing we do is to pin the darts closed. Being that this is a perfect sloper that I used, it has been corrected and recorrected so that the darts can be pinned at the outer edge to the vanishing point without any problem. They measure the same length. So I will start that way. If I were working with something that had not been developed or corrected, I may have to do it in reverse. I pin it together, picking up very, very little. That's a bent pin picking up very, very little at the edge, right to the vanishing point. Now, it's very difficult to pin right to the vanishing point, so I am going to reverse my pin and pick it up about a quarter of an inch below my vanishing point. And I continue to do the same with the other dart. Note that I am pinning the extra fullness down because if you were to slip your arm in, that is the way the fullness should go. Pinning it again, line on top of line so that you can just see them peeking out right on top of each other. And maybe another pin before the vanishing point. Getting that very close and pinning it. And here I may divide this and get another pin also to keep it in place. Now, the darts have been pinned together. And the next step would be to pin the seam under the arm. If you notice, I have preferred or I have decided to use the hook measure method. I have a hook on both sides. Pinning it together. Check first that this lies very flat. And we're going to pin the front over the back. It's more difficult to pin the back over the front because of the darts. Once it's lying flat, we're going to pin it together. And to make it easier, not to pin the front of the sleeve, we put our ruler underneath. And we fold the back or the front over the back, matching matching the under cap, picking up very little, going right down to the wrist. This has been a perfect pattern sloper that I've used. So everything should line up, pinning the wrist, and then giving it a little tug to see that it lies flat. If it doesn't lie flat and you have a gap in that area, one has to check the sloper. But for the time being, one can correct that line by putting in a straight line. This one does lie flat, and I can get the center. And the next pin should be in the center. Always when pinning, get the center of two pins. 
and then the center of that, and the center of that. Pin, picking up very little, right at the edge, all through all the thicknesses, getting the center again, and then the center again. If you see that it's too many pins, you can divide this section into thirds. Pinning it up, very little. Again here, very little. Going on to the next section. Sliding your ruler down. Thirds again. Thirds again. Let's go up to the top. Line on top of line. It's very important. Otherwise, you may get a twist in your sleeve. Here, I think I will go in the center, and then the center of these two pins. And again, the center of this one. At this point, the sleeve has been pinned together. We have the cap with the shirring. And my sample has it by hand. I've decided to use one that has hand sharing. I take out the ruler. I check that it's lying very flat. There are no twists in the sleeve. And at this point, the next step would be to sure the cap. So the first step in setting in a sleeve properly is to copy the sleeve sloper onto muslin, which we have done. Cut it out and then pin it together, making sure you've put in your shirring at the cap before pinning. And at this stage, we are ready to go to the machine to share the cap as an extra aid for developing the shape at the top. What we have to do is share the cap by the machine without any thread. There is no thread on the machine. We've already shared the cap with a thread. Now we're going to share it by machine. And what we do is we start a half an inch below the threads that you've put in. Placing it down on the machine, we hold our finger very closely to the presser foot, holding the fabric also so that it does not ride out. It continues to bunch up. And let me show you a small section. As I run the machine, I'm holding it very tight I'm not letting it ride out. And I keep holding it and press it. Now I let go and I grab another little section and I hold it very tightly and I guide the machine cap through the machine for another section. And I continue doing this till I come to the other end of my hand sharing stitch. Again. Hold it very tightly. One doesn't have to worry too much because there is no thread in the machine. So if you don't share enough, you can go over it again. Now I'm coming to the end. And I'm going to ride it down a half an inch beyond my hand sharing. At this point, I take it out and I check what the cap is looking like. It looks as if I've pressed it or steamed it into shape. I think I'm going to need a little bit more here. But suppose this section had not shared properly. I would just put it back in the machine because it's too flat and I would do it over again half an inch below, holding my finger very close to the presser foot and pushing it towards me. 
I ride it again. Another section. Let go. And do another section. And continue around the complete cap. And check once more to see that the cap has a round shape. And then at this point, we are ready to set it into the sleeve armhole. Now that the sleeve has been shirred by the machine, we are ready to set it in. We have first copied the sleeve onto muslin. We've prepared it by pinning it. And last, we're going to set in the sleeve. But before we can set it in, we have to check our armhole. And this is very important. If the armhole is not correctly marked, the sleeve will not fit properly. So the first thing to do is to check whether the armhole is right at the ridge. The sleeve will be set there, whether it falls in a nice shape. The back ridge, after you have the ease at the back, you have the mark ending right at the ridge of the armhole. And then we must check that one inch below the arm plate is where your armhole is, so that that's the line you will set into, set the sleeve into. Also, pinning it together and holding it, check that one inch down and half an inch out. The red line is the actual armhole that we're going to be pinning. But if you take note, I've put in a few little dots above and a few little dots below before I start setting in the sleeve. So that if I have any adjustment in setting in the sleeve, I will not have to take off the bodice and remark the armhole and then set the sleeve in again. I can just remove it from the original line, take it off of that original line, and continue to pin it up or down. So before you start, check your armhole. The seam allowance I've given is a half an inch on top, leaving an inch at the bottom portion. The reason for that is if I have any adjustment, when I complete the sleeve, I will be able to trim it and have a complete half an inch around the armhole. So let's start. The armhole looks good. I have my lines a little bit below and a little bit above in case I can't use the original line for my adjustment. And I take my sleeve, and the first pin that I'm going to place on the figure is underarm, the underarm. We take that seam and we lock it into the seam on the bodice. And frankly, I'm using bodice number two. The reason is the front over back back over front, let them slide in and hook, one right on top of the other. It's very important that the line of the sleeve correspond to the line on the bodice. And you take a pin. The pin can be put sideways or up and down, being you have other pins that may be in the way. But that's the first pin in setting in the sleeve. After that, we come right up to the cap. Cap of the sleeve, top of the armhole, at the shoulder. And I may have to lower this just a bit. And we place the lengthwise grain of the sleeve, the lengthwise grain of the sleeve, to correspond to the shoulder. 
And you can just stick a pin in there, just for a minute. And the reason for that is to check if the sleeve is not lifting up. This gives you an idea whether the cap length is fine or not. If the sleeve is lifting up, you'll find that you're going to have to need an adjustment. But at this point, it looks like when I place it down, that the under underarm and the top seem to be falling flat. With that in mind, I then look at the direction of the sleeve. Now, I'm going to be working with the complete sleeve now. We have to look at this complete sleeve. I want to see if that line, that grain line that I have, is perpendicular to the floor. And my cross grains, which are my bicep and elbow, are parallel. You may find that you may have to make an adjustment on the top. You can move the grain line to the back about a quarter of an inch. And you'll find that sometimes that just gives you a better angle. Once I set that up, I check it again, and the sleeve should be falling straight, parallel with the floor, bicep and elbow, lengthwise grain, perpendicular. Now we can continue. Being I've got that, and that looks good, I'm going to put the top pin in permanently. You're going to slide it right in the cap of the sleeve, matching, picking up the garment, and then going back and picking up another little bit of the sleeve and anchor it permanently. Now we've got those two set. The next thing is to set in the rest of the cap by pulling in the sharing. You already have some sharing because you've done it on the machine. So you may need very little adjustment with the sharing that you put in by hand or by machine. The thread sharing, not the one that we've just done without thread. And I'm going to pull it so that I find that this just about fits the area of the armhole. Just about fits. I'd rather have it a little looser than tighter. I'd rather have that a little looser than tighter. So once I pulled it, then I'm going to take a pin, place it in the center of the two sharings. One sharing's on the cap, one a quarter of an inch above, right in between the two. And I'm going to wrap these threads around the pin so that it doesn't open up. I've got that. Divide my sharing. And I'm going to repeat that to the back. I have the back. I'm going to grab the little threads that are hanging here, pull them, pull them so that it just about fits the area I'm going to pin together. A little bit larger, maybe. Just about. And I'm going to also take another pin, place it between the two, and wrap it around. And now I'm ready to start filling in the pins. Before I start that, I'm going to undo the top a minute. And I should have really put in maybe two or three pins in this area first. So let's just backtrack. Pin under the arm. We've checked the top and it fitted well. Take it down and put in one or two pins, line on top of line, armhole of the sleeve with the armhole of the bodice together and picking up very little, pin them together underneath. Come to the other side. Line of the cap to the line of the sleeve on the bodice and pin those together. Just to put a few pins, not to have to do them all from the outside. And I may put in one in the front, one more. 
I don't want to cover it all up because I need room to work. Picking up very little. And what I'm doing is anchoring the bottom of the sleeve. And I'm putting it on the red line, which is my original line, until I see if I need to adjust it by lowering or lifting. And I do one more on the back. So two pins on either side would be enough. Now the back is anchored, bottom is anchored. The top we know fits. Put it back a quarter of an inch over. Anchor the pin in permanently. We pull the sharing. We pull the sharing in the back. And now we're ready to divide and start pinning the total cap into position. Now, the best way to do that is to get the center of the cap. And this is our cap. Get the center of the cap and put the first pin in. Come back to the other side and put a pin in. And then divide centers and centers as we're pinning. And let's do that. We're going to fold this in. Let the line go right on top of the line. This is very smooth through this area. There's no sharing here. The sharing takes place only on the cap from the notches. One notch to the other notch. So I'm going to get right in this area and I'm going to pin. Picking up either the sleeve and then the bodice and then the sleeve again or in reverse one pin. I come to the back and I'm going to put in my next pin. Now before I put in this next pin, I must keep looking at the sleeve constantly to make sure I do not change the direction because one pin could take the lengthwise grain off balance and that's the most important thing in setting in a sleeve. It's that this lengthwise grain be perpendicular to the floor and the elbow and bicep parallel. So when I pin the next pin, I check. I could just as well drop it or lift it, which wouldn't be a good idea. So looking always straight on to the sleeve, that's very important. Get the next center, fold it in, and anchor your next pin. I could just as well pick up the bodice and then a little bit of the sleeve, and then the bodice again. After doing that, I must definitely check the front again, going back and forth, checking that you haven't twisted your sleeve. Now, my sleeve is falling in very well, and it looks like I'm going to be able to use the original line. There is no pull. It's balanced. The fullness here seems to be enough to fit into the bodice. There isn't too much of it. If there were too much fullness here at this point, after pinning underneath, top, and two center pins, you will be able to tell whether you have too much fullness or too little fullness. If you have too much fullness, you unpin it and you take and you pin it to the lower line that I've put in. That's if you have too much fullness on top. If you find that your sleeve is very flat and there isn't enough fullness, then you unpin the sleeve and you pin on the line that was above the red line. Once you have that set, then you check again at the top. So the most important thing is that this lie perfectly flat not too much or too little fullness. And being that we put in those little dots earlier, we wouldn't have to take off the bodice, chew it on the flat, and put it back up. We save a step. You may not have to use those dots. In my case, I'm not going to have to use them. But you may until you find the true armhole to fit into this sleeve, to fit the sleeve into actually. Now I'm going to divide this area again in half checking that I keep that nice little round feeling that we did on the sewing machine. 
we have very little sharing and very little. And the most important thing is not to have any tucks. No tucks. If there's too much fullness, what do we do? We lower the armhole. Right now, there isn't any. And I'm going to grab a little bit from the bodice, a little bit of the sleeve, and back on the bodice. And you're sort of weaving your pin in to that area. It gives you a nice look. Now I'm going to check it. It's starting to look all right. If you see what's happening, I'm going to be getting this nice round look. And I continue doing that. One pin in the front, check. One pin in the back. Dividing always in the center. Always in the center. And checking everything. Now a long sleeve that you set in, the wrist area, once I get this, I will show you. The wrist area should be just about touching the figure. Just put in that pin. I'm going to have to sort of fill in the gaps in between. But it should just about fit or just about touch the back of the figure. It shouldn't stand away or it should not bunch up this way. It's really important that this falls straight and that the wrist back just about touches. I'm checking it again in the front. It's really important. You constantly are checking this. Taking another pin and dividing, again, center areas. Center area. Now, one could also pin it through all the thicknesses and then lift up the top area. It's a little harder to do. Gives you a nice finish. But the most popular way seems to be grabbing some of the bodice, a little bit of the sleeve, and the bodice again. As long as you're doing it right on that line, line on top of line, that's the most important thing. It must be on the line. The top is a little flatter, a little bit flatter, so you don't have a little bunch of sharing on the top. Here it seems to be holding very nicely. And what do I do? I go to the back. One in the front and one pin in the back. Again, you see what's happening. It's a nice, smooth line. Again, I must say, if you find that it's too much fullness and you can't accommodate it in the armhole, you must use the lower armhole line on the bodice. You may find you may have to lower it just an eighth of an inch. You may have to lower it a quarter of an inch. Or you may have to raise it an eighth or raise it a quarter. But we do not change the sleeve. It's the armhole that we accommodate to fit the sleeve. The sleeve has already been checked out, and I've been using a sloper. And that automatically means it's been checked out for accuracy. Again, let's go to the front and get another little area. I may use this other method at this point right now. Going through and then grabbing and then going through all the area. It holds a little bit of it, of the seam allowance. Again, let me do one in the back. Lift it up, and I'm coming right here where the notches are. I'm going to grab the bodice, I'm going to grab the sleeve, and then the bodice again. And it is holding right at that area. Please make sure, I cannot stress it enough, that you are placing one line on top of another. Again, check the front. See that you have not changed the direction of that sleeve. Come to the front again and check wherever you have a little opening that needs another pinning. 
And here I have one. Grab some of the bodice. Grab the sleeve. And grab the bodice again. And that will hold the sleeve together. Again, this is where the time is to make sure that you get it very close. Down here I find that I have a little opening. I'm going to do the same thing. Line, grab, and line. And that will close up the bottom of the sleeve. Now, let's look again. We've got most of it all pinned in with the exception of the top. There are still some gaps there. Let's lower it and continue pinning right here. Right at the very, very top, there is an opening. I'm going to lift that sleeve up, the cap, line on top of line, grab the bodice, grab the sleeve, and grab the bodice again on the line, the armhole line, and then just let the cap roll. One or two in the back are needed. Let's check that. Right here, there's an opening. Let's go right into that and see if we can close that up. So far, I do not have any tucks in the sleeve. And it does roll as if I had done it with an iron, pressed it into position. Now, this method of shirring on the machine without thread is only used on muslin. It is not used on fabric. On fabric, you're going to have to use a steaming method. But this will give you the right place for your notches. We have a notch in the front of the sleeve, and we have two notches in the back, which we will then, when we completed the sleeve, mark the bodice to correspond. This way, when we're sewing, we know we must sew up to that notch, the bottom, and notch to shoulder, and shoulder to notch in the back. I have one little area here, and then it's completed. Let's put one more pin in here. Grabbing very little. Try to make your pin pickups very small one thread or so. And then check your sleeve that you have a nice roll. Front, a roll in the back. Lift the sleeve. Check that your lines are parallel to the floor. Bottom of the sleeve is just about touching the figure. And this line, of course, we know is half the wrist measurement. But we are interested in the lengthwise grain, which is the red one, to make sure that that's perpendicular to the floor. At this point, the sleeve, the long sleeve, has been set in. The method of setting in the sleeve is exactly the same if you were setting in a short sleeve with a self-cuff or a short sleeve with a shortened cap. Of course, a shortened cap sleeve will look differently, and I'll show you samples of those in a minute. But let's go over this now. We have set in the sleeve first by pinning in the bottom, then the top to see if the cap length was all right. Once that was determined, we pinned in a couple of pins inside the sleeve underneath, two on each side sufficient. We've come back to the top. And then we've shared the threads, pull the threads of our sharing stitch to make sure that it just lines up with the armhole of the bodice, always looser than tighter. Wrap it around a pin. Repeat the same procedure to the back. Wrap it around a pin. And then we start pinning in the centers, a center pin and a center pin in the back, checking constantly. Constantly checking that lengthwise grain, constantly checking the bicep, the elbow line, to make sure that they do not shift. 
If I had too much fullness on top, that would give me tucks, I would lower the armhole and start again, if there were. Or if it were just very, very flat and you couldn't get this nice roll, I would lift up the armhole and start pinning again. And at the end, I would check, before I would put in my notches on the bodice, that it were, would be falling perfectly straight, length, elbow, bicep parallel to the floor, and at this point, I would be ready to put in the notches on the bodice. Let me pin them in first. There is the notch on the sleeve, and I'm going to put a pin here to represent where the marking of the notch would have to be. I would have to mark this in red to correspond to the sleeve. I'm going to just leave the pin in there. That would be a notch. I would do the same thing in the back. I would move the sleeve over and I would put a pin to correspond to that notch and another pin to the notch a half an inch below. I can draw those in in red now, or I can do that later when I take it off the figure. If you're sure it is perfect, you can just as well take a red pencil and draw in the notches to represent the back, the notch to represent the front, and one notch at the top, at the top of the shoulder because we moved the lengthwise grain over a quarter of an inch, we must then put a notch to represent where the shoulder would be placed on this figure. And it would be right there. So we would have to put a notch to correspond to the shoulder. I would then draw in, at this point, let me just make it straight, a red cross mark right where that pin is. When I would take the sleeve off, I would have a mark on top, two in the back, one in the front, and the seams that correspond to each other to reset it. And that's completing the long, basic, fitted set-in sleeve. Now that the sleeve has been finished setting in, and I have put in the notches to correspond to the sleeve notches, and everything is balanced, I'd like to show you the short sleeve set in with the self cuff and a shortened cap sleeve. First, the short sleeve with a self cuff. It is the same cap that we have on this sleeve. The only difference is that it's a short sleeve and it has a self cuff. You'll be setting one of these in also. And the third sleeve, check the notches, notches corresponding. And the third sleeve is a sleeve that has a shortened cap. In other words, this measurement is shorter. And you can see what happens when you set that sleeve in. This one falls exactly like the long one, straight, parallel to the floor, bicep line, lengthwise grain, perpendicular to the floor. But the shortened cap sleeve stands out you notice, it stands away because the distance is shorter here and it lifts it up. If that had happened, putting in a basic sleeve, 
we would have had to raise the underarm to accommodate that. But this sleeve is improperly because the distance between the bicep and the calf is much shorter than the distance between the bicep and the calf of this sleeve. They are put in exactly the same way. In fact, this happens to be an easier sleeve to set in because there isn't much fullness at all to work with. After it's put in, again, the notches correspond to the front and the notches to the back. The only difference is it stands out. These are the three sleeves that you'll be setting in and the method in which you'll be setting them in.